this is a summary of the B3 benchmarking program. I'm going to just quickly go over all the features uh, once you have an account set up. And then after I go through all of these tabs here at the top, I'll show you how to make an account and input your data. So um, I'm going to use Edina as an example. Here you can see this is all their buildings listed here. Um, they have quite a few. I'm going to look at maybe one of their, their public works building as an example. So once you click on one, in, one of the buildings, you can see on the left all the buildings are listed now in the column. And then here is kind of the overview, the summary of the building. It gives you um, the square footage. And then down at the bottom here, the two different the meters. You can add as many meters as you like. I'll show you how to do that later. Uh, right here, we have the benchmarking tab. And benchmarking is kind of a formula that you, you get from taking your, your KBTU, so uh, 1,000 BTU per square foot per year. So you enter in the square footage of your building, and then you enter in the energy use, and it calculates the uh, actual KBTU per square foot per year and then through a engineering model they determine um, what a building like that would use if it was uh, based on the current energy code and so they're estimating that a building of this size and this usage type would use 82 KBTU per square foot per year so the building's using quite a bit less about less than half of what it's expected to use. So you can see here it's got a lot of stars because it's using significantly less energy than the benchmark. And then it's also illustrated here where this yellow bar is where the benchmark is um, at 82 kBTU per square foot per year. And the actual is quite a bit less um, and it breaks it down in the electric and natural gas. So that's about 35. So this is kind of the first that first step you can look at to see how your building is doing compared to what an estimated use of a building would be doing. And this, this tab is kind of the most, one of the more useful tabs um, for your building. The next one is peer comparison. Um, and a lot of cities, schools, or counties like to look at this to see how they're doing compared to other similar sites. So this building, like we saw before, is doing quite well. So it's uh, ranked in the 91st percentile among 33 similar sites. So the program finds other sites that are already in the B3 program and, and finds out where, where this is at. Um, it doesn't actually tell you the other site names. They're kind of anonymous. But here, the Sedina building is all the way up here. Uh, the Energy Star, that uh, is integrated with the B3 and so right now, we're, I guess there's issues until sometime this summer where they will be. Some buildings are rated, some are not. Depends on the building types. The more common buildings are giving given a rating. It's like one through 100, and it's an Energy Star building if it's over 75, I believe. Um, but that's just kind of an extra feature. Um, the baseline is unlike benchmarking. The baseline is giving a rating based on its own um, past performance. So you can say, oh, we want to look at uh, how we're doing compared to 2011. So right, they, you, can come, you can come into this tab and click here and change your baseline. So if you made a bunch of changes to your building in 2010, and so you want to look at the, use the baseline in 2009, you could come here and click on two months um, to make like a window of 12 to, to go back and compare to, to that. And so this, this is kind of, it shows you the up and down. So if you're going up, you know, it's more towards the red. And if you're going down, and so it does it in CO2 dollars in consumption. So consumption went down, but they actually ended up spending money, more money, which is likely due to just increasing energy costs. Uh, and then the CO2, that also went down, which makes sense because the consumption went down. So, I mean, this is nice. Um, I don't think it's the best way to look at comparing your energy costs or your energy use. 
Uh, I think that's better in the, one of the other tabs I'll get to. Uh, targets, this is also kind of a similar thing where you can go and you can click on, you can create a target and this one is 20% reduction from 2009 usage. There's a bunch of different, here you can kind of name it and do a relative target or an absolute target. So saying, you know, I want to spend only $1,000 a month on electricity, whereas the relative is, you know, 10% reduction or something. And where this comes into play, this targets, is when you go into your reports. So reporting, I think, is the other really useful tab in addition to the benchmarking tab because this helps you visualize it better, I think, than maybe that baseline tab. So this helps you compare uh, costs and different energy usage. And up here, this show reporting options. It's help with, click on that, and then it gives you all these different ways to look at your energy use in this building. Um, so you can do continuous, which will just show you every month in a row that you have. And don't forget to always change the duration. So you could go back, you know, to 2009. This, this uh, building didn't have any electric data back then, so maybe we'll just stick with 2010. Um, and then you can look at dollars versus KBTU. And you can also look at CO2 emissions if that's something your organization is interested in. I think the default is the, the energy use of KBTU. And then here's monthly year over year. So you can, it's more like a, a line chart. So you can see if you're using lesser year by year, like month, month over month, uh, which is somewhat helpful. Like here you can see it kind of gets a little fuzzy where you don't, some of these months, they all look kind of the same, but you can definitely see, for whatever reason, 2010 in the winter was using quite a bit more. Um, and then also here, you can look at some options over here, square foot normalized. Uh, so that means if you made an addition, it'll, it'll take into account that you made an addition. So they're, taking the KBTU per square foot um, versus if it wasn't square foot normalized, then it would just show you, yeah, you, you started using more energy because you made an addition, and so that would go up. But if you wanted just to see on average per square foot if you're using more energy, that's a way to do it. Um, if you like made retrofits the same time you were making an addition, and same goes for, like I guess, if you demolish part of your building. And then um, over here, that's where these, the baselines and targets come into play again. So if you made a, a baseline of, I think our baseline here, yeah, 2011, it should show like a little dotted line of what 2011 would look like. So here we are, we're looking at the baseline. So see now uh, the, these new little white dots uh, on a line, and you can see around 2011 here, the dots line up to the top of the bars. And then over here, while well, it looks pretty similar, um, some of the months were using less than the base, that, that baseline. Like if you look here in February, and then, yeah. So they kind of were keeping a consistent amount of energy use. But that's a, one of the things you can do. And then you can also weather normalize that. So this. The data that we're looking at right now is not the actual KBTU per square foot. Um, it's a weather normalized amount, so they're taking into account uh, an average temperature, and it's, a, it's an algorithm that we don't really <laughs> need to know exactly how they're doing it. But so when I clicked off the weather normalized, you can see that, um, so this is the actual consumption data. And you can see that they were using a lot less than that baseline. So this is how much they really use. They used um, 2.4 kBTU in natural gas in January. And then here in, the, in 2013 January. Um, so it's quite a bit less than um, that 2011 baseline. And then when you click the weather normalize, you see that it it's taking into account that 2013 and 2011 were uh, likely 
much warmer than 2000, or 2013 and 2012 are much warmer than 2011. So it's saying, yeah, okay, you know, you're kind of, you're still on track. Maybe the savings that you saw in natural gas in the winter wasn't due to any building changes or operational changes. It, it was due to warmer weather. So that's what this little button does. But if you wanted to say, well, I, I want to know what we actually really did use, no matter what the weather. And so you can unclick that, unclick that button there to see what you really did. And then if you especially wanted to look at um, just the natural gas, for instance, that would show you, show you how that looks um, versus. So that's about the reporting tab. Um, it's a good way to, sh to visualize it, to show other people in your office really what, what doing the B3 has got, got you um, to be able to show any changes, especially if you, you made it into any to your building. You can click on your whole city or, or school district, or you can go back and look. You can see how your whole city is doing, um, which is not exactly especially helpful if you're trying to make improvements or work on individual buildings. But you can see, so this you see how this whole city of Edina is highlighted, and we're looking at the report for the whole city. So that is kind of interesting if you want to just get a, a snapshot of what all of the buildings are doing. Um, so, and you can do that, um, you know, and this is how you can look at the benchmarking for all of your buildings at once, so, or the benchmark, so you can see what buildings are doing, what, what buildings are doing best. Um, it, it won't benchmark everything combined, it'll benchmark each building kind of individually, but um, that's an interesting thing as well, and you can look here at the summary of your buildings again. So, and then this, this is a nice way to make sure your, your account is up to date. So it'll give you, these are some incomplete, incomplete sites in here. You can look and this, uh, the arena doesn't quite have enough data. And you, know, you can go in and try and see what, what was going on there. But it looks like their account's really up to date. Dan is doing a good job. And yep, that's the, the general overview of the three.